Yo, what's up everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Renz, and today we're going to talk about your shadow self and shadow spirits and you doing that shadow work. This is a deep dive into not just yourself, but into the law of correspondence of as above, so below. This will fit into some of your religious concepts, but your doctrines, it may not. If this is not for you, then that's fine. It's fine. But let us begin. Let's get started. But before we get started, I want to thank everybody who supports the channel. Everybody who's a member of the channel. And remember, on the full moon of each month, we will have our full moon chats for members and those who support the channel on Patreon. So I look forward to those. Thank you guys. It's going to be great chats as we continue to develop the process and the concept. But today, let's talk about your shadow self and shadow work. Let's talk about shadow spirits and whether or not they are evil or good or benign. It's going to be interesting. If you disagree, disagree is great. Commentary is great. Let's have a discussion. So let's get to work on this. So what is your shadow self? For those who have studied psychology, philosophy, you may have at some point come across Carl Jung. And Carl Jung... Uh, Coin the idea, the phrase of your shadow self. What is meant by your shadow self in the Carl Jung thought process is what we would say is the negative part of ourselves, the negative thought processes of who we are. The idea that um, we need to look at our anger, look at our envy, look at our jealousies, look at all these thoughts that we may have that we would deem evil or negative. And to be able to control, monitor, uh, dictate the behavior of our shadow self will allow us all to be better people. I agree to a certain degree. Your shadow self could be and is all those things and more. But the idea that your shadow self is somehow always negative, is always evil. That is where I differ from Carl Jung. The thing about it is this. In the mid-century time frame, 1500s, 1800s, 1700s, 1400s, somewhere around in there, a bishop, a Catholic bishop, forget his name, he coined the seven deadly sins. Well, originally he coined the nine deadly sins, but the church retconned those in order to make them the seven deadly sins so that it will correspond to the number seven. And most of you know these seven deadly sins is greed and envy and gluttony and wrath and, you know, all of those. And they're considered deadly sins. And then on the flip side, there are um, seven opposites of those, all based in love. Well, even in the shadow self, it is not so much there being an opposite as much as the interpretation of each emotion or state of emotion. Anger is not a deadly sin. Wrath being the name of it when it's taken to an extreme. But anger can cause you to save a life. Anger can cause you to stop uh, overeating. Anger can cause you to stop being in a toxic environment. We see that in the Abrahamic religion, especially that of Christianity, where the Yeshua character was angered about the money changers doing business in the church and flipped them tables. We will call this righteous anger, righteous indignation. Anger can be used on a positive side. So your shadow self can be used on a positive side. Lust, for instance. If I am lusting after another man's wife, or a woman is lusting after another woman's husband, or a man is lusting, or a woman is lusting for a child sexually, that's a negative. That's a big negative. That's a hell no negative. But every husband should lust for his wife. Every wife should lust for her husband. 
we should love them, yes. But within and within our love, there is the lustful part that makes us desire to be with them. We would like to pretty it up with phrases of, I'm sexually attracted to my husband. I'm passionately attracted to my husband sexually. We like to pretty it up in those types of words, but at the end of the day, it's lust. It's lust. And there's nothing wrong with it. You should have it. Many of you are in sexless marriages because you don't lust for each other sexually. That's why you're in a sexually inhibited relationship. That's actually a problem. That's an issue. If I am greedy for the security of my family, the financial security of my family, and I do so in a way that I do not purposely um, damage or hurt anyone else, is that greed negative? No, it's not. All these things are in the manner to which you explore them, express them. So you have to take this deep dive into yourself to be able to understand and know how to handle these situations. Many of us like to go into a room and especially if we're looking at someone else's faults, point a flashlight. We're looking at a situation we were in, point a flashlight. Even if we cause the situation, we like to point just a flashlight at our own iniquities. It is the wise person that realizes that you cannot point a flashlight because you are only seeing a small space of the room. You're only seeing a small part of the issue. You're only seeing the part of your iniquities that you think is fine and you can handle and you can master and it won't make you look bad. We have to turn the entire light on in the room. We got to turn that overhead light on. We got to open the windows and let the sun shine in. The entire room must be illuminated. And the flashlight is only used to look behind things that's being covered in shadow. Uh, the things that are behind the dresser, the things that are under the bed that the light can't penetrate. But we need to be able to sh shine the light on the entire room of ourselves, in the situation. And that is difficult. That is the work on your shadow self that you will find the most difficulty. Because you then have to admit to yourself not just a part of your wrongdoings that you know people may not look bad upon you. Not just a part that you know you may not look too bad upon yourself. You now got to shine the light on every aspect of it. All, everything you've done. Every act you've committed. Every thought you've had. Every situation that you were the toxicity in that situation. You got to shine the light on the whole thing if you truly, truly, truly are trying to do some shadow work. I recently had an experience where I met and ran into a gentleman um, that was, we were in a brotherhood. Well, we're still in a brotherhood. And <clears throat> I did not know how it affected him at the time. But I know it affected all of us. Everyone who was involved was affected to a certain degree. So I pulled him to the side and we had a very good conversation. But within that conversation, I expressed to him, I don't know if anything I did, I understand your perspective. This was my perspective. This is what I saw going on. Later on, I found out more about this or that or this person or that person. And I've come to the conclusion that there were a lot of things out of my control, but for the things that were under my control, and I expressed to him, I said, I don't know because we didn't talk. If I injured you emotionally, uh, respectfully, if I injured you in any way, caused you any discomfort or harm, I truly apologize. And then you are more than willing to express whatever I did. Right? And we had a good conversation about that. We left each other in a good place with each other. I was willing to allow him to express all his thoughts and I've always been willing to do that to allow a person to express all their thoughts whether I agree or not now if I disagree yeah I will say that well, I disagree but you know that is your perspective of it and you are well within your right to do so as we all are 
the resolution of that hopefully benefited him. But more importantly, it benefited me. Because over all these years, since over the couple of years that since that's happened, there has been this part of me that has wondered, you know, to every person involved, how may I, I have injured them in some form or fashion? And so um, I've been making it a point to contact some of these brothers that I can find and just to find out if I've injured them in some form or fashion. Something I should have done a long time ago, but situations sort of prevented that or I allow situations to prevent that. Let me say that more specifically. I allow situations to prevent that. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to fully look at ourselves, fully turn the light on, fully see every aspect, all our dirty laundry, but also you got to turn the light on everyone in the room, everyone in the room. If you're around other people, if you're dealing with other people, turn the light on everyone in the room. Turn that light on. Let all the situation be seen. Don't just allow, allow a person to show what they want to show. Don't just allow a person to uh, just say what they feel and see what they feel. You shine the light on every aspect of it because you will be surprised how much first, how much information you may actually find out about yourself and about the situation. But secondly, you'll find out even more information about that person. You'll come to that understanding. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, that person will realize more in depth of the shadow work that they need to do to look inside themselves. Now, they may not. If they do, great. But if they don't, that's still great. Because your responsibility towards that ends there. You are only responsible for the amount that affects you and you've done your work but turn the light on don't allow someone else's perspective to keep you from being able to see the entire thing see the whole thing and don't allow someone to drag your character through the mud just because they see only theirs turn the light on the whole room but I digress let's come back so in dealing with your shadow self it will give you confidence. It will give you the ability to deal in shadow spirits. Now, some people, I'm going to lose some of y'all right here. About to lose some of y'all. Some of y'all are like, yeah, 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 all right. Go ahead, Coach Renz. Woo, I'm with you. About to lose you right now. So all my life, I've always seen these dark shadow spirits around me. All my life, they've always you know, been there, present. But because they started coming to me when I was a child, I never looked at them as in the negative because they never did any harm to me. And then my grandmother, who, my grandmother was Christian, but she was a country girl. So, you know, they had all these sayings, they had all these thoughts about, I mean, my grandmother was, she would make the homeopathic medicines and, you know, they had their superstitions. You know, my grandparents had their superstitions. So I would learn all these things from my grandparents. But my grandparents always told me that no spirit can harm you unless you allow them to harm you. Which gave me a perspective as a child that as above, so below. No spirit above can do anything to me below unless I allow it. No spirit below can do anything to me above unless I allow it. So it gave me a sense that I had command and control over any and all spirits around me. So as a young child, I began to command these spirits. I began to command them. And I realized that these shadow spirits are, they're not evil, as people will have you believe. If you, uh, m many who are of religions will now say, oh, those were demons. But if you actually did the research, the etymology on the word demon from the word daemon, then you will realize that demons are not evil. Daemons are just a hair below the archangels. They're not evil. But they were converted into something evil as government took control of religion. So, I don't care what government does. The only thing that matters is where I am and where you are. So, whether you want to call them daemons, demons, doesn't matter to me because at the end of the day, 
shadow spirits. These are the ones in darkness. You know, we always have a tendency to think that things that are in the darkness are negative. And I know our culture has brought us to that, where we are the good guys wear the white hats, the black guys wear, you know, I mean, the, the bad guys wear the black hats. I'm a product of the culture of America, of racism. So things come out racially often. You know, why do the good guys always wear white? I always say, why do the good guys, bad guys always wear black? Or something like that. I don't even, I can't remember something. Y'all know what I'm talking about, KRS-One. Why does the black jelly bean taste the worst? Why does the black licorice taste the worst? Why do the bad guys always wear black? Why is it bad luck when you pass a black cat? Yeah. Anyway, when we look out into the universe, there's more dark, there's more darkness than there's light. There's more um, dark matter in the universe than there is light matter. When we look out, the stars, the suns, they make up a very small portion. We like to say things that like the light of um, all the darkness in the universe can't extinguish the light of one candle. True. But all the light of a candle cannot take away the darkness. The light of one candle can never take away the darkness. There is always darkness. There is always darkness. From the birth of every of the universe, no matter what religion you're looking at, it was birthed out of darkness. Some would take that as a metaphor of negativity, but was there? If you uh, follow any of the religions, sin or evil didn't come into the universe until much, much later. The universe was created out of the darkness first. First. The fact that the universe was in chaos doesn't necessarily mean a negative thing. It's just that it wasn't as or it wasn't in the order that we have it in today. So there is more dark energy, more dark matter than light. But our cultures makes us think that, and it sounds better to say, oh, the light energy, light energy. Things are illuminated. But truly, those who have mastered the darkness as well as the light are the ones that are the masters of their own universe and the universe around them. When you deal with these dark spirits, it is not an evil thing. It is for you to command them, for you to get your frequency in line, your confidence in line to command them. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But let me give you a couple examples how in popular culture we see these things. If you were to, if I like the Mandalorian. Mandalorian's great. I like the whole Star Wars series because the Star Wars series actually follows the Cabal, right? The Kabbalah. And in order to, like, you have Benai and you have, you know, um, Dioth in the center. <clears throat> I'm going to put, put it up here somewhere. But um, the thing about it is the dark side was the Dioth, which is why Darth Vader was Darth Vader, you know, Dark Father. But it sits in the shadows in between knowledge and understanding before you get to wisdom at the top of the Godhead, which is the form of the body, which correlated with your pineal gland. The Jedi warned about going to the dark side because they feared that because you don't have emotional control, you will get into the dark side and get stuck. So they actually feared the dark side, which is why they had hella Jedi, but it only took two of the Sith to destroy the Jedi. But in this show, The Mandalorian, at the end, the final one, and spoiler alert if you haven't watched The Mandalorian, but when Luke Skywalker comes, he does this crush, this force crush. The Force Crush was um, deemed horrific by the Jedi and not to be used because this was part of the dark side. And this is supposed to be five years after the whole, the, the, the empires destroyed. When he uses the dark, the, the, the crush, the Force Crush, it's, a, it's them saying that he's mastered both the light and the dark side. And then, of course, you know, they, all this other movies they had, you know, the girl Ray, she had to master the Force of the dark and the light as well. The thing about seeing dark spirit is that you have to master your dark side as well as your light side. They're not evil. It's all your emotional control that determines how well you can master these things. The reason why when I was working with uh, a gentleman recently, I call them wraiths because in the thought process of what a wraith is from Scottish, uh, from Scottish folklore, a wraith is a some, uh, it's not it's not a ghost it's like a, a, a pale image of yourself prior to death or right after death 
So these dark energies are you. These dark spirits are you. It's the is is your reflection at the con at the higher and lower conscious levels that you, if you gain emotional control and understanding, you command. Many of you will uh, accept that if you ask for something in the name of your God and have no doubt, then your God would deliver that to you. Whether you're Hindu or Christian or Islamic or you know Buddhist, no matter what you are, you believe the universe will give to you whatever you ask for, but you cannot ask for it with any doubt. The true secret of the secret was being able to ask for these things, commanding, and let me rephrase, because I'm saying ask. You cannot use language of begging. You cannot use language of doubt. The language you must use is the language of it has no choice. You see, the, the dark race that I saw as a child and that I've always seen it throughout my life, they do not sway me nor have any control, control over me or bring negative things to me because I command them with no doubt whatsoever. People ask me how do I land on my feet all the time when I go through stressful situations is because I command for the universe to do so and I command those above and below to do so to my benefit and that friends, that my alchemist is the secret to understanding how to manifest any and everything in your life. See, as above, so below affects everything. People call upon their ancestors. Are you begging your ancestors? Are you asking your ancestors? No, you command them. But many in these traditional religions right now will say, well, you're being disrespectful. You got to humble yourself. And I hate when they say humble yourself. What the hell is humble? It's an H in there. You're speaking English. But I digress. The spirits above and below don't respect your humbleness. They respect the command and control that you will because you know that you were given, you have command and control over this entire universe. Was it not given to you? Was it not? Does not every religion teach you this? When Buddha sat up under the Bodhi tree and the demon came and said, who will testify? And he put his hand in the ground and said, the entire world will testify to, to my Buddha head, to my, you know, spiritual heightened levels. The whole world is going to testify. And he commanded the demons and he commanded the, the angelic beings. He commanded all spirits, the animal spirits. He commanded all spirits to testify to him reaching Buddha consciousness. The Christ mind. Krishna, same thing. Jesus, same thing. Muhammad, same thing. This same pro thought process is everywhere. You just have to open your eye to see it. You just have to open your eye. Through the Hermetic Laws, you gain command and control over the entire universe, over your entire universe. Although we exist in a shared uh, simulation universe, you, you, you control your universe, how it affects you, how you affect it. You control your ascensions and descensions on a physical plane as well as the astral plane. Nothing controls you but you. You control the dark race, and they're not evil. They may come at you negatively because if you're afraid, if you're fearful, they will feed off your fear because you are actually commanding them subconsciously through your fear and that is how they respond to you. When you say you're attacked by demons, your subconscious is allowing that fear in your subconscious is allowing them to come at you that way because they're responding to the energy you're putting out. It's just like in a relationship. Most people respond to the energy that you put out. You put out negative energy. You put out frustration. You put out argumentativeness. You put out violence. You put out all these things. Why are you surprised when the other person repels from you? You should not be. But if you, when you put out love, when you put out consideration, when you put out respect, you gladly accept the love that they bring to you. Well, it works both ways. It's called duality, the duat. It goes both ways. Both ways, Jamar. <laughs> it goes both ways. So you have to be willing to understand that it all exists on a pole, on a scale. And because it exists on a pole, on a scale, 
it is not separate one from another where you cannot separate angelic good nice beings from dark race or demons that you may want to call them they're all spiritual beings on higher levels your perception of them will determine how you control and command them you can allow for and what you think is that oh these ones over here are going to fight against those over there no they're not it is all you it is all your energy your heart energy your mind energy and your gut energy that's going to determine if you really really gain a deeper understanding your sexual energy will also will be the most powerful weapon you have in order to determine through sexual tantra how these dark race how these angelic beings and every damn thing in between think about it the seraphims in the biblical text well, the, 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 um, well it's the it's Christian Bible as well as the Hebraic Bible but the seraphims guard the entryway to the gate of Eden to the Garden of Eden right when that's a whole nother talk we have about Garden of Eden but the seraphim word come it means snake means fiery serpents but yet serpents are vilified but then serpents aren't because you put a golden serpent on the, on the staff right and then there's fiery serpents that were biting people that made them put the golden serpent up so <clears throat> don't get so caught up into your doctrine without understanding deeper understand this is why usually in order to study cabal uh the cabal you had to be 40 years old and well versed before they would let you study this uh, this is why pythagoras had to wait 40 damn near 40 years before he can go into the mystery schools of asia and egypt uh, so don't wait 40 years for you to learn open your mind and eye right now so you can see it but all these spirits all these things around you that you may be uh, fearful of the moment you release that fear, open up your foundation chakra and release all the fears from you and walk into a situation with no doubt. Um, I use my Tibetan bowl to get me in frequency every day in multiple locations, whether I'm at work, whether I'm at home, whether I'm getting ready to go to sleep, to get my frequency right. When my frequency is right and I'm on my bowl, uh, I'm using my bowl and the frequency is right, then I will um, begin to command these dark spirits. I will command these wraiths to do my bidding uh, and I'd rather work with the with the race than some light energy because as I said there's more dark energy in the universe than there is light energy so why would I choose the lesser form of energy the lesser amount of energy I choose that energy that is the most powerful in order to move things in my life the only time things don't move right is when I allow for my own self to be swayed by either my own doubt at times or that of others so you have to get into a state where it's only yours. So I hope this information, I know this information has been great for some of you guys. Some of you is going to repel. The comments are going to be like, uh, you know, you're going to hell, blah, blah, blah. Or thank you. This is a great, amazing information. But thumbs up helps the um, channel. I appreciate you guys continue to join, become members uh, so that you can be a part of the talks. But y'all have a great day. Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself. Shine the light on the entire room. Shine the light on the entire rooms. Good journey. Good vibrations.